Welcome to People Tools Tech Tips. I'm Randy Gronke. Today, we're going to burst BI Publisher reports inside of PeopleSoft. <music> bursting BI Publisher reports in PeopleSoft. Well, what is bursting? Bursting is simply taking one large report and breaking it up into multiple smaller reports. Okay, think of a paycheck run. We're going to burst a paycheck run along every employee ID, and every employee ID is going to get their own paycheck. Another idea is accounts receivable. Maybe you're going to send out invoices at the end of the day, at the end of the week. You want to make a big run of all the invoices. However, you want to break those invoices amongst your customers. So a burst idea is amongst your customers. So bursting is where we take one field inside the data, and we use that field as a trigger when it changes to divide it up into multiple other reports. Now, in PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft wants bursted BI published reports to run from the process scheduler. That means we're gonna to have to put them into an app engine and run them from batch. Now, running them from batch into the process scheduler, the output goes to the report manager. We're gonna use the dot .publish method inside the delivered uh, app packages that deal with a BI publisher inside of people tools. Now bursting is an older technology. It's an older paradigm of how we did things. It's usually with think of these big mainframes, big machines, and we ran these huge reports that just had this one report. And then we chopped that report up amongst the employees, the departments, the customers, whatever, sent them out, and then we divided them. That paradigm is a little bit old now, and I haven't done it. So should we use bursting nowadays? Let's let's save that question to the end of the video and answer there after we go through how to do bursting and what we do here. So what are we going to cover inside this video? We're going to cover bursting in BI Publisher with People Tools. We're also going to cover template control to switch out report templates inside a bursted report. What we're not going to cover is bursting security, additional search keys for the report manager, or any kind of report manager configuration. As always, all the objects you see in this report, including RTF templates, sample XML file, and all the people tools objects in a people tools project file are available on peopletoolstechtips.com and our GitHub repository, People Tools Tech Tips. Before we start bursting, we need to start with a working report. I've created a quick report showing employees and their training. Let's run the report and see the basic output before we burst it. Burst report should run through the process scheduler. So here's our run control page running for the company GBI. Here's our app engine, type BI Publisher. Once it runs and is posted, we turn to the page and look at the report manager. And here's a report. This is the simple output of that report, employees with their training listed. Here's our data source for our report. With our XML file uploaded, we no longer need a schema file to burst. Then, here's our BI Publisher report definition. We see that it's an RTF report using our XML file data source. On the template tab, we have our default template. We also have two additional templates that we'll use later. We define our output to only create a PDF report. And on the bursting tab, nothing is configured yet. Here is our XML sample file and our BI Publisher templates. We're using RTF templates for this report. Here is our sample XML file we use to build our report templates. You'll notice this is a complex structure with a parent-child relationship in the data. The top level node is the employee information. And for every employee record, there is one or more child training rows. Here's an example in the data of an employee with multiple training rows. Here is our default template. This is one of the secondary templates, which is basically the same, but just purple. And our other secondary template, which is the same, but in green. We have to think about our data structure before we burst BI Pub reports. Here is the output of the base report. At the top of the page is the data from the highest level node in the XML data. This is the report header. Then we have child node detail data, which is the many courses each employee has taken. We can burst by any field in the highest level node of the report. We cannot burst by any of the child data in the detail section of the report. Here is what that data looks like in the XML file. Here's the highest level node of the data that we can burst by any one of these fields. 
Then we see the child structure of the training. We cannot burst a report by any of these fields. So let's start bursting this report and we'll do it by the department field. Navigate back to our BIPUB report definition for our bursted report and then click on the bursting tab. We see at the top of the page the bursted by field, which has a dropdown. This dropdown is populated by the XML file in the BIP data source. We'll choose to burst by department ID and save. Going back to our bursted example and we'll rerun the report. When it completes in post, grab the process instance and then go to the report manager. Put in a process instance and refresh. Here's our bursted report. We can see that it bursted our report by the department ID into 11 different reports and appended the department ID to the report name and description of each report in Report Manager. Every employee that was in Department 13,000 is now in this one bursted report. Let's look at one of the other options on the Bursting tab of the report definition, Enforce Unique Burst Value. If you check this field, the bursting process will check all the values of the burst field in your report. If the values are not all unique, the process will end in error. For example, if you choose to burst by employee ID, it would work only if each employee is in the file once. Where you may want to use something like this is a bonus check run where employees are only supposed to receive one bonus check. If an employee appears twice, it won't just skip the second check. The process generates an error and stops printing. Let's go back to the report definition and the bursting tab and look at the template controlled by field. Using this field, we can change the template used for a specific bursted report. First off, the available templates must already be configured on the template tab of the report definition. Here we see our default template and two additional templates one called Burst ACC and the other one is Burst HR. Going back to the Bursting tab, we can use the Template Control by field to use a different template for that specific group. The caveat to this is that every data row in that group must have the same value to use this alternative template. If at least one data row does not have that value, that entire Burst report will use the default template. This isn't a problem if the Burst by field and the template controlled by field are the same field. For our example, I'm going to change the burst by field to employee ID. So every unique employee ID will burst into a separate report. Then I'll set the template controlled by field to department ID. In the criteria grid, the first department value to look for is 10,000. If found, then use the XPT3 BI burst HR template. Add in a row for an additional criteria. I'll put in the department value of 13110. If found, it will use the XPT3 BI Burst ACC template. When BI Publisher bursts the report, it will check the template controlled by field against the value of this grid. If it finds the value in the grid, the report will then use that template. If it does not find the value in the grid, it will use the default template. If one row of data in the burst report has a different value in the template controlled by field than all the other rows of the report, the default template will be used for all rows in that report. Save. Run the report again and see the results in the report manager. Employee KU0061 is not in one of the criteria departments, so the default template was used. Employee ID KU0010 is in the 10,000 department, and that report used the HR template, which is the purple output. Employee ID KU0044 is in the 13110 department, and that report used the ACC template, which has the green output. Now, bursting does have an architectural implication that you want to get your admins involved in. A BI Publisher report that is not bursted has the BI Publisher directory, it has the report inst directory, and underneath that report inst directory is the report. Bursting report creates a new subdirectory in that report inst directory for every bursted value of that report. So if you have a report that's bursted into 20 different small reports, you will have 20 subdirectories in there. And the subdirectory's name is the sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, 
down to n, whatever it goes to. Now this isn't big if it's 20 or 30, but think of about a large paycheck run or something where you're bursting and you have tens of thousands of subdirectories. It gets unwieldy. It doesn't scale. It's going to weigh down your file system. It's going to turn ugly after not too long. So back to the question we asked at the beginning of the video. Should you use bursting with People Tools and BI Publisher? My thought is no. It creates a mess in the architecture. It's an old way of doing things. It's an old paradigm. Take example paychecks. Employees are not printing out every paycheck. They're not ex expecting to get the, their advice from their direct deposit in a check, in, a, in an envelope every week. They may go online every pay period and see how their pay worked out and what they've got and what went to their bank for whatever reasons. And on occasion, they may choose to print a couple of chip paychecks, but it's not every employee printing every pay and advice every time. It's now a referencing. Usually they're seeing it online and online is good enough and the report is back up for something else. So store the data inside of PeopleSoft and report only when needed rather than reporting everything, saving out to a file server in the hope that maybe a small percentage will actually be requested to look at later. If there's a leak requirement that you have to save the original somewhere, well, that can be dealt with also without bursting. Create those reports, send them to some file safe somewhere that they can be viewed but not altered, and that's good enough. Create the individual ones where we have to. In my 12 plus years of working with BI Publisher inside of People Tools, I have never received a requirement that could only be satisfied using bursting. There have always been more elegant, fine-tuned, and structurally better options out there using People Tools and BI Publisher without bursting and sending reports to the report manager. And besides that, do you really hate your users that much that you want to send all your users to the report manager to search through that gobby thing and try to find some report from how many years ago to print out now? We've had several requests to cover bursting BI publisher reports inside of People Tools to this channel. So we've covered it, we have my opinions on it, and now let's go on and talk about new and better things we can do inside of PeopleSoft using People Tools. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to our channel, and we'll see you next time here on People Tools Tech Tips. Yeah, bursting is a dumpster fire. <laughs>